So let's uh, see how we're going to uh, deal with the workshop that we have for today. So again, the workshop is not to be completed at home. I want you uh, uh, in, in lab. You're going to do it at home, but I want you to follow what we are doing in this workshop for every other thing that you're going to do from now on. Because I see lots of people had trouble uh, starting up something and writing code. And so this one actually shows you how you have to do all that to make it easy and straightforward for you. So what, what you need to do, uh, first of all, the very first thing you need to do, so I'm going to, I created over here a demo thingy for myself in here to show you. So let's say this is the directory that you have on your computer. The very first thing that you do, that, and this happened once you did it at the beginning of the semester when you did it workshop zero, is to clone my repository on your computer. Now, either you do it with GitHub, or you do it with the command line, it's all there. And if you have any problem, like many of you have already done, contact me, I'll set up your computer. I'll take over your computer, and I'll set it up for you. If you, if you have gone through workshop zero unsuccessfully. Uh, nothing is more disappointing for a teacher to see a student comes and asks for a question that was clearly stated in the document that the teacher provided. It means I didn't study, I just want you to do it for me. That hurts, OK? So please, uh, uh, I, I do not mind. All my students know I do, don't mind. Follow the instructions. Um, book an appointment, and uh, uh, I'll help you with whatever you want. So the very first thing you do is you clone my repository over here. So, so the repository of notes and everything. So we clone that one, and it comes to our, uh, uh, so I have that one. You don't edit that. That's only for you to copy things from. You never, ever go in there and develop something. OK? You don't do that. But what you do is you uh, clone your works repository in here, and then you work in that one. So um, uh, having a works repository, let me see if I can, like, I'm just going to go to my account. In three seconds, I'll do it. And it's being recorded for those people who don't have it. So this is my repositories. Let me see if I have something. In. I don't think I have a, any works in here. Now, I'm just going to create something. So I'm going to create a new repository, um, IPC144Works. Well, let's make it lowercase so it's easier. IPC144Works. And it's a private one. I am adding readme file. and. You have done all these things, hopefully, already. And I'm going to put the .git ignore. I create the repository, and it's done. The only thing I need to do is to replace that git ignore with fardads git ignore so I don't send garbage to GitHub. Git ignore says to git what to ignore when upload and download. You have to overload, overwrite with that with mine. So now that I have IPC144 works, obviously, in here, I'm going to write my student information and all the good stuff. Uh, but I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to clone this one right beside Fardad's repository. So I'm cloning this. You don't need to do it now. Today, you're just going to download it and do the workshop. You can do this at home. But if you have already done it, what you need to do, so this one is cloned too. What you need to do, if these two are already on your computer, starting the work is to right click on a repository, pull to make sure everything is updated. And then right click on your own repository. Don't trust yourself. Pull. Make sure they are both pulled and they are updated. So it means your computer has the latest stuff on it. OK? Now I'm going to put the git ignore over this so I don't put garbage on GitHub. So I'm going to copy the git ignore from Fardad's repository and put it in mine. Paste and replace. You'll see it's red. Anything that is red like that, or you know, if it's not red, you just change something. You want to know what is changed? You can either in here go to uh, Tortoise Git and do a diff. It shows exactly what it was and what it is now. So it was like left side, and it is at right side. As you see, some stuff are added. That's all. It shows you what it is. If you, don't, if you don't have Tortoise Git, you can always push it to Git and on Git watch it on GitHub. GitHub has all these features over there. Anyways, 
Now I'm going to create my workshops repository because I don't have one. All lowercase because on Linux is easier. So I have it on workshops repository. Now in workshop repository, what I will do, I'm going to go to Fardads. I'm going to go to workshops. Workshops three I want to work on. I right click copy and paste it in mine. As soon as you do that, the very first thing that you have done, you do this, you immediately, immediately go in your repository and commit and push it. So that's the first thing. So I'm going to say starting workshop three, just to remind myself, lab. So you know later on when you're coming here what, when you did it and how you did it. You click on all to make sure everything is added, everything new is added. You click on all, commit and push, and it all goes to GitHub. Now we are ready to work. The first stage. So at each stage of success or each state of failure, at any moment that you think, this is a moment I want to come back in future, you commit, always. So later on, you can see where you go to. That's all. Okay, so that's that. These are quick reviews on everything. Now, today's workshop. I'm going to go to the workshop that I just copied. I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to open README file. The README file that we are opening here, because I followed workshop zero and I installed Markdown Viewer, I can see it properly. If you don't have Markdown Viewer, you have to watch it through internet. Okay? So it's telling me what I'm supposed to do. Okay? What are the due dates and everything? And the most important thing, in this workshop, we are introducing unit tests. Therefore, we will start the workshop in the lab, which we are doing now. So what is this workshop about? So lab, I'm sorry. I hate to read from what I post, though. That's the worst type of teaching, but I'm Pretending I'm you and I'm reading it for the first time. <laughs> That's what you do. So, and uh, I did the worst thing that all you guys do. I come directly to lab and I don't look at these. <laughs> okay? So, which is very fine. Uh, but um, if you see something strange is happening, like the due date doesn't sound right, things like that, first go back up, see if there is anything over here different, and then read it. Like lab due dates, this part of the lab, yada, yada, yada. So, they all may change from lab to lab, depending on what labs are. Anyways, so <clears throat> in this part of the workshop, you will start by writing, and may, let me make it bigger. Uh, can you see it back there now? OK. You will start by writing a module. When we say a module, I mean a separate file. A module means a separate file. You are not doing it in main. You are not doing it in main. Dots. Create a module, implement, uh, uh, by writing a module, implement it in a file called marks.c. So like the previous workshop, you have marks.c again, okay? Which contains your functions for PR and grade, grade, get number of students, and get marks. So these four functions are to be created in that file, okay? I had three students successfully writing the workshop cannot submit it because they modified the main to do what they wanted to do. Main is my unit test. A unit test is a program written to test another program in all aspects of it. So I ask you to write a program, and I write a unit test that checks all the little corners of your function to make sure they work properly. If you pass that stage, it means the functions you have written, the tools you have written are OK. Now we can write the main application. This is what we're demonstrating today. Okay, because now you know functions that return values, functions that receive values. So we have a very simple example over here for them. And you are only using if statements in here, because that's what we learned last time. So no loops for now for your functions. Obviously, in DIY, you're going to have write, write loops and modifications and all the good stuff that we are doing, but not here. So. After completion, your program will receive a series of marks, okay? So that generalizes what the idea is going to be in DIY at the end of DIY uh, or in the unit test. You will uh, receive a series of marks for a test. 
received by students. So essentially, all you guys are doing a test. You all got marks. I'm entering your marks into this program. Okay, that's my purpose. Okay, it will convert each mark to a percentage. What does it mean? If the mark is out of 20 and you get 10, you got 50%. So it does that conversion to see what is the total mark and get the percentage, number one. <clears throat> Finds the maximum and minimum and average, tells that highest mark in this class was this one, lowest mark was this one, and the average of the class was this one. It gives me that information and prints a, a, and prints a report of those things. Grade conversion is done based on this table. So when we are doing grade conversion, if mark is between 0 and 50, it's an F. If it's 50 to 59D, 60, you know, we don't have... D plus, C plus, I didn't want you to write 50 if statements, so it's just few of them, okay? So conversion is based, so if I'm giving you a percentage and I've got to tell you, give me the grade, you look at this table and you see how you write your if statement. Functions to write. You, you are to complete the following four functions in the lab section. PRN grade receives a letter grade. So the job of this PRN grade is just to print a single character, not a single character. If it's an A+, plus, it has to print an A and a plus. The reason we have this one and we, didn't, and we didn't just print the character is that all the characters that you are, grades that you are printing, they are A, B, C, D, and F, right? But you have an A+, plus, that's two. That's why I have to make sure that I'm printing the stuff properly. So to fix that problem, what did we do? We said anything that comes in, just print it. If it's a single character, just print it. OK? That's number one. If what you re receive is a plus, print an A first. So it's A plus. That's all. So your function, and I'm going to write the pseudocode for it, what the pseudocode is. So in the pseudocode, we are saying this is the function, and this is the example of the function. So when you pass the function an x, it prints x. When you pass b, it prints b. When you pass plus, it prints a plus. That's all, OK? The pseudocode of the function receives a character argument. I call it arg. I named it something else. For the sake of pseudocode, I'm saying if arg is plus, print a. Then print the argument. Done. So that's the code you are writing in that function. Grade, it returns a character, receives a mark out of 100. Always make the variables, arguments of your class descriptive to show what they are. When you are writing the body of it, call it M. It doesn't matter. But when you are writing the prototype of the function at the top, be descriptive. So somebody looking at your prototype can guess what the function does. If you say char grade int i, that doesn't say anything, OK? How does it work? If the mark out of 100 that is passed is invalid, it returns x. It means invalid mark. If it's a valid value, returns the proper mark for it. So if it's 75, it's a b. It returns b. If it's higher than 90, it returns plus. That's all. What is the pseudocode for it? As follows over here. It tells exactly what it is. Oh, yeah. So it says exactly how to write it. Having a character called grade set to x. If arg is greater than minus 1 and less than 50, set grade to f. Yada, yada. Set grade to d. And it comes to the end, return grade at the end. So it tells you what to do. These three dots, four dots, means repeating the same logic over and over. OK? That's the pseudocode for it. These pseudocodes are going to vanish soon. Don't get used to it. OK, I'm holding your hand for now. <laughs> OK, it's going to get shorter. And little by little, the pseudocodes changes to what we call use cases. A use case tells you how the function is used. You have to write the pseudocode yourself. Get number of students. It receives number of students and returns it with a twitch. What is it? Only 5 up to 35 is acceptable. 
If the user enters anything other than that, it's going to print a proper error message and return zero instead. So if you are asking for, so if you're asking for a number of students, the user says three, you return zero. And you print an error message saying, hey, minimum is five. If user enters 100, you say, hey, the maximum is 35, and you return zero. Pseudocode is here. Get mark. Int maximum acceptable mark value. You see? Big thing. I'm not going to use that in my, when I'm writing, I'm going to write just arguments going to be called max. <laughs> okay, I'm not writing that one when I'm coding because I'm not crazy. I don't want to type nine hours. But when I'm explaining what get mark does is that. So what happens over here, you get mark receives 50. It means the marks are out of 50. It means values between 0 and 50 is acceptable. And it gets it accordingly. So if you get 25, it returns 50%. Got it? If you get 40, it returns 80%. If somebody enters minus 3, it returns minus 1. So invalid value is minus. If somebody enters 50, 75, it's greater than 50. It returns minus 1. Pseudocode. Read the mark. If the mark has an invalid value, which means it's not within the boundary, set the mark to minus 1. Print invalid mark equals yada yada. Else, set the mark to mark yada. I should have called it otherwise, but anyway. Set the mark to mark. So set the mark to some people are not, I am ashamed to say, like develop math. You have no idea, so I had to actually tell how to do it. So mark multiplied by 100 divided by max makes a percentage. Okay? So the mark that uh, the user enters divide, uh, multiplied by 100 divided by max converts it to the percentage value. You return the mark, and you're done. Okay? So that's that. But what is a unit test? A unit test is a program written to test all possible executions of a code. Make sure it works correctly. Looking at the main provided you, you will notice that initially four tested functions are there. So when we look at the main, one of the good things is that when you open, when you get my stuff, as you see, I double clicked on read me and I opened it, right? You can actually do this. So I'm just keep that in mind. I could just go into lab and double click on the v, uh, lab uh, VCX, yada, 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 okay? And it opens it up. Three years later, four years later, and it's going to prepare it the way it's supposed to. And I don't know why it's here. Let me just put it where it belongs to. I'm going to put it down here and do like that. Okay, so if I go to the Solution Explorer, you will see that your readme file is actually, you can actually look at it here if you want to. It's the same thing. Just bring it to the left. And this, you, for this, at least you don't need that markdown browser thingy. It shows you what it is, and you can edit it if you want to. But anyways, so not that. I was talking about this. So if you look at the main, when the main comes up, it looks like this. You see that? These are the functions you're supposed to write, the prototypes. These are my unit tests, PRN grade test. Great tester, get number of student tester, get mark tester, tester program. The first four are actually testing the individual functions you have written. It's a unit test for that function. If you see my main, everything is commented except from the first one. So you focus on one function, you do it, you finish it, then you go to next. Then you go to next, then you go, when the four are done, the tester program runs the whole scenario, a very simple program to see if it's nicely formatted or not. Did you do the printouts properly or not? Now, how do we code? How do we actually start writing a program? So initially, all but one, but one of these functions are commented out. By doing so, you can develop and test the functions one at a time. You don't have to work on 50 different things. So how do we make it work so it can compile and run one? It's called prototyping. This prototyping doesn't mean writing a prototype at the top of the thing. Prototyping, you know what is, a pro, what is prototyping? In old days, they used to do that. Now they're doing it on a computer. So you want to build a house, they first build a small maquette for you, a small uh, 
what we call a prototype of the, of, the, of the house. So you look at the house and say, yeah, this is good, and that's what I want, right? Or they create this 3D thingy on the computer. It's not a house. You cannot go live in it. It's just an imagination, right? So you do the same thing with your functions. So when I ask you to write a functions, write functions, you're going to write hollow functions that do nothing and compile it. So this is what you do. Selector grade, I'm doing nothing in it. It's a complete function. It compiles, but does nothing. Same thing, get number of students. So I have a value, and I'm supposed to return it. That's what I'm sure about. And I'm going to receive nothing. I'll do that. I write it, I compile it. Does nothing, but it compiles. So you write hollow functions for the things you want to write. You compile, you make sure your hollow function compiles. If you execute it, nothing happens. Then you start with the simplest function that appears that it's not using the other functions. So in here, when I say PR and grade, PR and grade is supposed to do a grade. Am I calling another function in here, apparently? No, I don't think so. Get number of students, am I calling any of the functions over here? No. Get mark, am I calling any other functions in here? I don't think so. Grade, maybe I am because it's getting an integer and it's supposed to return the grade. I don't know. Maybe grade is used in this. I don't know. Okay? It doesn't matter. Even if you, even if you have to call it, call the dummy function. It doesn't matter. It compiles, although it does nothing, but takes you one step ahead. And that's how we are going to do it. When you are all done, you, go, you run through your tests and everything is working. Now you have four tools in your toolbox. Using these tools, you can write the application that I'm going to ask you to do. It becomes like as if you are writing printf, as if you are writing scanf. You are writing functions that helps you to do whatever you want to do. And that's how it is. OK? Am I making sense or I'm completely nuts? Completely nuts? Yeah. <laughs> Am I completely nuts? Yes, you are completely nuts out of your mind. OK, so that's what we are going to do. So again, number one, you pull the, both repositories to make sure everything's updated. Number two, you copy that one from my directory to your directory. You commit, and you say start working. Then what you do next is this. Take a look. So now that I have this, if I don't have marks.c that I kind of spoon fed you over here, it's marks.c is over there, but even it has this thingy, but it doesn't. So I left it empty. If it's not, just create a file, add a file to it, and start your work. Okay? So now in here, I'm going to start my work by adding all those empty functions that I have. I'm not going to give it to you next time. You have to do it yourself. And when you do this, I'm going to look at your commits on your repository. So I copied those, so that's the first step. I'll come over here, and I'm going to put those things over here. So let's say I typed all these things, and they're all there. I'm saying return percentage. As you see, I made a mistake over there. Let me fix that. Either I'm going to make that one percentage or this one. So that's a typo. i got to fix. Easy. Uh, like I'm going to actually, because that repository is mine, because this repository is mine, I'm going to actually fix it right now. Workshops, yes, three. Where was it? Yeah, right? So there you go. Copy, paste, save, get out, commit, fixed, um, mark to percentage, commit and push, done. Okay? So that is fixed. Let's come back over here. Now, at this stage, what am I supposed to do? I'm going to come over here, and this is my unit test. <clears throat> Has everything commented, only print grade tester. I'll look at the print grade tester, and if you, don't, if you want to, 
you can do modifications like this that it doesn't change the main. So because your main is going to be overwritten by mine, I'm going to put my own. But if you see you want to have this close by, there is no problem to come over here and print grade tester, bring it over here, X, and bring it up just to see what's going on. Don't change it just to see what it does. So it comes over here, it says start testing and goes through certain tests. You don't need to worry about this. The logic of this is not your concern. Your concern is to write the function the way we asked you and see if it works properly, okay? Right now, as if, as at this moment, I can actually compile my code. So I'm gonna go rebuild. And I run the program and I get error. What is the error? Okay, it says local variable is not uh, initialized. So I'm gonna make the oh 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 I'm gonna make it zero, make it zero, make it zero, run it again. There you go, it compiled, right? Didn't do anything, it run, right? As soon as I did that, and I'm I'm gonna come over here and go. Prototyping complete. Commit and push. At each stage that you reach to a point that you did something, commit it. So later on, if you see you did some screw up, then I, you, you said, I wish I could go back to that time, you can. Okay? So now it's like you are doing undos, right? Now I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to start how, thinking how print get grade works. I'm going to put the thing over here, the, the, the description of what PRN grade is supposed to do. Put my code at right. And start coding. That's PRN grade, that's the pseudocode. I'm going to start coding. That's what you're going to do now. So, Please start doing it. And if you are if you are on school computers, you can always download zip if you don't want to go through the stuff and have some memory stick or something so you can carry it around with you. So if if you are at school computers, all you need to do is to go here. Where is it? If you are at school computers and you want to work on school computers, go to the repository. Oh, that's not OP244, my mistake. You can always go over here and go download, download zip. So it downloads a zip file of this one and then you can start working on it, and then email it to yourself or something, just to start working. But if you are on your own computer, don't do that. On your own computer, work in your repository. Be organized. You have to be up, you really need to have OCD when you are coding. If you don't, you won't be a programmer. A programmer without OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, on writing code, you cannot write a proper code, ever in your life. You have to be exact, you must follow instructions, and have rules and things that you have to always follow blindly. Okay? So start doing it. We're going to, uh, like, 15 minutes, spent 15 minutes, and after 15 minutes, we're going to do the quiz. If you are not logging to your uh, edge, we are not waiting for you. Have your computer. I'll turn on the computer using Microsoft Edge. Log into my Seneca IPC 144 NBB. Have your cell phones on the desk. When I say I'm going to start now, I'm not going to wait. If your computer doesn't write, run Microsoft Edge, let my friend and I know and move to another computer. Okay? Thank you. Now we are here to help you start doing the work. I'll come to you. Let me